Rip Van Winkle. This is a story unbelievable and fantastical, but it is true, perhaps as true for all of us as it is for Rip Van Winkle, a peasant from ancient America. Hey, Rip, can you give me a hand here? Sure, hang on. Thanks, Manny. You're a gem. And that's what he does, be a gem? Laying all day in the sun, glittering with sweat over doing absolutely nothing? He's a good fellow, Wilma, your husband. Rip, just as you got up to help Henry here, why don't you help me with a thousand things that need to be done around the farm? For starters, repair the fence, fix the roof, weed out the garden, and give a scrub to the sheep, will ya? Oh, all that today? All that today, before lunch. I'll help you, Dad. No, you go and play. Look what I made you yesterday. A boomerang. Thanks, Dad. I'll show it to my friends. They're all headed here. No, this is how you do it. No, run that way and throw it up like this. No way. That's not how you do it. What's the matter, children? Trying to fly a kite? Your kites are no good. They don't fly. Oh, they will fly if you know how to make them. Come, let me show you. Rip got busy teaching the children how to fly kites and had the time of his life. He even made them new kites and they flew beautifully. When the kids got tired of the kites, they all began to play with the boomerang. Rip, you're the best friend we've ever had. Really? Aw, oh, come here, all ya. Rip, you did nothing again today? He taught us how to fly kites. Well, somebody had to teach them. They even called me their best friend. Pretty smug, huh? When will you do your own jobs, Rip? You're impossible. I'll get to the garden right away. Rip set to work in the garden, but he saw a little family of ants eating a piece of weed he was to remove. Oh, I can't possibly denny you your food. Finish your lunch and then we'll remove this patch. Rip saw a caterpillar on another set of weeds. Bon appetit, mate. Eat well and grow into a strong, beautiful butterfly. Rip, why aren't you working? Well, let's get out of here. What do you say, Wolf? To the woods, shall we? So Rip took his dog, Wolf, to his favorite hangout in the whole world the wood on the Catskill Mountains. He picked his favorite spot by the lake and lay down in the cool shade of a tree, enjoying the breeze, the clear blue sky, the golden hue of the sun, watching the birds and the bees. The world is so beautiful, Wolf. The Master Creator has done such a truly marvelous job putting all these colors and textures together. Ah, I wish someday Wilma would be able to enjoy this. She works too hard. That's because she's the only one working. You really ought to help around a lot more. Who said that? 
Did you hear that, Wolf? Rip was taken aback by the scathing voice and its sarcastic mocking laughter. Intrigued, he followed the sound. Then the sound took him deeper and deeper into the forest, till he came to a place he hadn't known before. Wolf, where are we? Where's that? Rip searched around and he saw a pretty small man carrying a huge barrel on his back. It was clear that the keg was too heavy for him. Good-natured Rip went to help him at once. Hey, sir, let me help you with that. Hey, thank you, thank you. We need to go up there. Rip laboriously climbed a very steep mountain coming to the very top. And when he reached the top, it was like he was in a different world. Where am I? I am here with the juice. Okay, we'll have some when we break. You can have him put it up there. It was strange. The men were playing a game of Skittles and Ball, but there was no excitement, no happiness in them at all. Great shot. M marvelous. You know you would enjoy the game a lot more if you cheered a bit. Not all of life is fun and games, Rip. There's a time to have fun and relax. There's a time to be serious and hardworking. It was your voice that I followed. How do you know who I am? He's a jolly good fellow, Chief. He rushed to my help. That's his problem. He helps only those he wishes to. Else he would have helped his wife around the house and farm too. Ugh, I know. My wife can be a bit tough sometimes, but she's a good woman, really. The little green men continued their game in silence, and then they appeared tired, ready for refreshment. Hey, Rip, get those tumblers and pour out the juice, will you? Sure. And while you're pouring out the juice, be careful. Don't mess with strange things. Tell me about you. Who are all of you? And why are you so serious? We are the keepers of the forest and the people around them. And we are never happy to see a life being wasted in laziness and no purpose. Ah, somebody's got to admire the sun and the sky and the flowers and the bees and teach children how to fly kites. You just don't understand, do you, Rip Van Winkle? If you had done your jobs well, weeded out your garden when the weeds first grew and repaired the fence when the first crack appeared. You would have had enough time to teach the kids to fly kites and get on with farming and all the million other things that have to be done. Don't use goodness as an excuse for laziness. Some juice? Chief? And as Rip poured out the juice for the chief, for the first time he noticed that it was something very strange. Rip was filled with curiosity. He longed to taste the drink. And while you're pouring out the juice, be careful. Don't mess with strange things. Rip thought that he had perhaps been advised not to taste the drink, but the strange men were having gallons of it and seemed all right. What if I taste a drop? Just a drop, just to see what it tastes like. Surely that could do no harm. No, no, I mustn't. Rip, you're a hero carrying this all up the mountain. Yes, Rip. Thank you. Yes, Rip. Thank you. Yes, Rip. Thank you. Yes, Rip. Thank you. This feels like a cool winter breeze on a hot summer's day. This was just too much for Rip. He just had to taste the strange juice. He took a little in his palm. The chief saw him but said nothing. Rip gulped it down. Well, he was warned. The juice was so delicious that Rip had more handfuls of it and then he filled a tumbler and gulped it down. Soon the sun set and the moon rose over the sky. Rip began feeling very, very sleepy. He slid onto the soft green grass and slept very, very, very soundly. Ugh, wow, what a day it's been. The sun is high. Did I sleep here all night? Wilma will be furious. Oh, come on, Wolf. 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 
Ah, that notorious chap must have gone on home by himself to get his dinner. Time for me to go too. Rip walked back home, but there was something strange about the mountains, something new. Rip had a very weird feeling, but he shook it off and entered his village. Who are all these people? And why do they dress like this? Why is there no face that I recognize? Is that Henry? My, he looks old. Hey, Henry, is that you? Yes. Who are you? R Rip, is that you? Of course. How old you've grown within a night, Henry. Why is everything so different? One night? Rip, you've been gone for a whole 20 years. 20 years? What? How is that possible? And while you're pouring out the juice, be careful. Don't mess with strange things. I slept for 20 years. Oh, Wilma. Rip Van Winkle rushed to his home and saw that it was the only home in the entire village which was old, dilapidated, and almost falling to pieces. His wife was nowhere to be seen. Henry, where is Wilma and my son? When you didn't return and none of us could find you, Wilma left this village with your son and went to stay with her father. My son, he must have grown so much. Oh, I hear he is quite a handsome young man, just like you were. I hope he hasn't turned out like me, lazy, always casual. You're a good fellow, Rip. Good only when I like to. Had I really been good, I would have made the extra effort to help my poor wife and looked after the farm. It's selfish to only do what one likes all the time. Will they still care for me? Your family loves you, Rip. They would love to have you back. Not so soon. Rip made up his mind that he would now meet his family only when he could show them that he was a changed man. So he started repairing his old farm. The friends he had helped, and all the children now grown, who had thought of him as their best friend, helped him and finally when he invited Wilma and his son back, they were delighted. I am so sorry, Wilma. Son, my laziness cost us 20 whole years of togetherness. I am so sorry. Well, Rip finally had a happy family. If you visit Rip Van Winkle on a clear moonlit night, you will see him surrounded by children who never tire of hearing the story of what happened on that strange night. In the strange woods, atop the strange Catskill Mountains, Rip's story would always end with this. Don't be like me, kids. Do your duties whether you enjoy them or not. Remember, there's no excuse for laziness.